In today's segment, we're going to take a few minutes and take a look at the Model 3's HVAC or the Heating, Ventilation and Air Conditioning System because since the reveal event last year, everybody's been asking, how does it work? There's that long slit, there's no louvers, there's no vents. How does the system work? Well, today, Tesla was granted an application for the new HVAC system in the Model 3 and we have lots of details and diagrams. So let's dig in and take a look. It's a really ingenious system. Now, during the ride event that we attended at the uh, end of July, at the uh, delivery event, I should say, uh, Tesla engineers and test riders didn't really have a lot of information, uh, but they were very gracious and let us play with the system, at least from the user interface aspect, but they didn't really know much about how the internal systems work, but we did get one bit of information. Uh, I heard an engineer tell us that it uses two intersecting planes of air. So that stuck in my mind and I thought, well, I wonder how that would work. And of course, in the patent application, it's pretty much laid out. I'll put a link in the video description. You can look at the application yourself and there's lots of diagrams. So I'll put up the first diagram and let's get through and talk about what's involved here. So the first thing you're going to see in this diagram is that this is, by the way, this is a cross section from, uh, from one end to the other. So towards the uh, right hand side of your screen will be the uh, front of the car, the windshield, and on the left will be where the passengers sit. I want to point out three different elements on this uh, diagram, uh, 606, 608, and 614. Now the way the system works is Tesla's implemented a single blower in the dash that blows air through multiple uh, plenums. Uh, most of the air comes through plenum that's indicated by 606 and that's kind of facing uh, towards your face. But there's another small slit, a plenum, indicated by number 608. And the patent application basically explains by varying the amount of air coming out of both of these little plenums or orifices, that they can actually deflect the air up and down without the need for an internal louver to move the air up and down. So it's just a strictly, um, um, you know, two intersecting planes of air as it's basically described. The side motion, on the other hand, is governed by some internal vanes. They're motorized, uh, by the way. And that's element number 614 here on this uh, screen. And uh, they have like little hinges on the top and the bottom. You don't see these, they're buried inside the dash, which is why when you're operating the system, you see no moving parts at all. There's another plenum that's not shown on this diagram and that's uh, pointed up towards the windshield of the car for the uh, defrosting in the winter months. Lastly, on this diagram, I wanna point out number 604. That's the door for the uh, glove compartment and behind there is the cavity for the glove compartment. As you can see here, it's pretty shallow. I remember seeing that. During the test ride, I managed to open the uh, glove compartment. It's pretty shallow, but then again, so is the S and the X, so not a lot of room in there. So a lot of people are asking, why would Tesla design a system like this? What's wrong with louvers and vents? Well, I don't think there's anything wrong with louvers and vents, but I think, personal opinion here, that because Tesla wanted to maximize the interior space on the Model 3, they shortened the uh, dash. And when you shorten the dash, you have to have uh, you know, a different way of kind of dealing with some of these things. So they thought about uh, a different way of implementing um, an HVAC system that would take up potentially a little less space. So it's quite an ingenious system and it shows that Tesla is not afraid of thinking a little bit differently when it suits them. My other opinion, of course, is do I think this is going to come, uh, come out for the Model S and the Model X? And personally, I think, yeah, it kind of makes sense that they would do something like this, especially if they were going to get rid of, say, another instrument panel in front of the car, maybe go with some kind of HUD or something. Who knows what, what their plans are, but I think it's a pretty ingenious system and it would be a little bit of a shame to just kind of leave it on the Model 3. So we'll see how that works out. Anyhow, pretty short and sweet. It's, uh, it's not terribly complicated, but it's quite innovative in, the, in a different way of thinking for this car. So it's uh, going to be interesting to see how it works. But I played with it in person and it really does work and it's easy to use. So I hope you enjoy the segment and don't forget to follow me on Model 3 Owners. That's my Twitter handle, by the way and check out our forum at model3ownersclub.com. And uh, if you'd like to support the channel, keep the videos going, we appreciate you. Take a look at our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash model3ownersclub. And lastly, we've got some really cool Model 3 accessories and apparel for you to take a look at on our shop. Anyhow, that's it for today. We'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.